Grease. More like Grease. <laughs> Roll the intro. <laughs> Welcome to Greece, a country every human learns about as soon as they are an embryo. This country is so oversaturated with history, culture, literature, philosophy and hatred towards the Turks, it's almost acceptable the amount this country is shoved down students' throats as soon as they enter the first grade. So where is Greece? Well, if you're not from the United States, you probably already know, but for those of you with a star-spangled banner as your anthem, it's located in the south of Europe. At the bottom of the Balkan Peninsula, or as we Europeans like to call it, the Funny Zone. Greece is made up of nine main parts. Thrace, the Aegean Islands, Thessaly, Epirus, the Ionian Islands, Central Greece, the Peloponnese, Crete, and Macedonia. <laughs> this is a topic worthy of a video of its own, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Anyways, Greece is a country of 10.7 million people, living in a nation mostly covered in mountains. Around 80% of Greece is made up of them. The other 20% is fucking Moussaka or some shit. The three major cities would be Athens, Thessaloniki and Patras. Athens being by far the biggest city in Greece, with an astonishing 3 million citizens, making it 1 in 5 people living in Greece being from Athens. Thessaloniki being the second largest city, having just about 1 million people, and Patras around uh, 170,000. Besides Greece being known for civilizing the rest of the world, it is also known as the vacation destination of Europe. One fourth of the country's GDP is from tourism, and there are a shit ton of cities simply created for the sake of tourists, like Paralia, a vacation destination where the entire population of Serbia goes to during the summer. You got your beaches, one euro souvenir shops, and Giros restaurants. If you want to get an authentic Greek experience, I highly advise you not to go to them. Even though they are inexpensive, you really don't have much to do there other than to chill at the beach and go to nightclubs filled with tourists. Instead, go to Athens. Now, Athens is one of the big boy cities of Europe. It stands on par with London, Paris and Rome. Every goddamn fucker out there is gonna tell you Athens is the cradle of Western civilization and democracy, and they are right. The history of Athens spans back to even 1380 BC. These cunts were at it while we were still banging sticks somewhere in the forests of Germania or some other barbarian cesspool. And this is evident throughout the city as there are literally ancient ruins all over the place. You'll walk up a couple of blocks and boom, ancient ruin. Walk a couple of more and boom, another one. And now a word from a friend and fellow YouTuber, Serbian Mapping. The most famous ancient site would be the Acropolis, coming from two Greek words. Akron meaning high point and polis meaning city. You get the high city. This place is the home of the Parthenon and other lesser ruins you probably didn't remember in school. The Acropolis was a place where kings ruled, fortresses stood and gods lived. And today it is a tourist attraction, for which you must pay 10 euros to go and see up front if you're not from the European Union. Thanks Greece, you fucking assholes. Serbian mapping. Check him out on YouTube. Uh, amazing videos, 10 out of 10. Anyways, the Parthenon originally before being turned into a tourist attraction used to be a temple of the Greek goddess Athena. Athena was the goddess of wisdom, civilization, law, and justice, inspiration, courage, and other shit the EU claims to stand for. The ancient Athenians took her as a protector of the city, thus the name for the settlement, and thus the temple. On the Acropolis there is also a smaller temple known as the Erechtheion. This temple was used to house a bunch of holy relics used in worshipping Athena and the goddess of the sea, Poseidon, as well as being a burial place for the mythical king Cecrops' daughter. Later on, when the Greeks got their shit together and embraced the unconditional love of Christ, the Erechtheion was turned into a church, but later on, when the Ottomans took over, they turned this place into the residence of some Turkish general's harem. To get back at the Turks for turning one of their holy places into a whorehouse, the Greeks took the Tsitsarikis mosque and turned it into something even worse. A museum. Speaking of museums, Athens has a shit ton of them, which you know is to be expected as again there are ancient ruins lying on every corner. One of the museums worth checking out would be the Stoa of Atelos. A Stoa is a covered walkway, basically a pedestrian zone with a roof. The one you're seeing now is a reconstruction of the original. Today it's used as a museum and there you can check out all the Greek pots and plates you used to see in your history books, which to be honest is pretty cool to see in person. 
By the stoa there is also the temple of Hephaestus, used to worship the god of blacksmithing, Hephaestus. Much like the Parthenon, the temple got turned into a church and it served as so all the way till the 19th century, when it became a tourist attraction. Here you also get another church built in the medieval ages. Since we're speaking so much about religion, it's worth mentioning that Athens is riddled with churches. There are so many that I can't even find their names or their history since they're all over the place. One of the more famous ones would be the church of Panagia Kapnikarea, located in a pedestrian zone near Syntagma Square. This medieval bastion stands in the middle of a modern world, like a time capsule, reminding us all of the time we all used to die from the plague. Another church in Athens would be the Metropolitan Cathedral of Athens, and the difference between these two is night and day. Panagia Kapnikarea was built in the 11th century, meanwhile the cathedral in the 19th, and having these two not too far apart from each other is amazing to see how things changed over the years really makes you think. Another great thing to check out would be the Pantheonic Stadium, originally built for the Pantheonic Games, which were held every four years. This shit has been here since the 4th century BC, and is the only stadium to be built entirely out of marble. Pretty cool stuff. And if we're talking about stadiums, we gotta also talk about the Odeon of Herodes Attic. Built all the way in the 2nd century AD, this bad boy was used for theater, where men played themselves and also women. The fact that this place is ancient falls completely under the shadow when you realize how many men have kissed each other on stage here. There's also the National Garden, which is a park filled with orange trees and palms. Pretty eyed. It also has goats and some other less important animals. By the way, Greek streets are filled with orange trees. Anywhere you go, there's a fresh batch of oranges. Which is really great, just adds on to the chill vibe already going on in Greece. You also got the Monastriaki Flea Market, which is a tourist trap galore. Shops and stores selling useless overpriced shit to gullible tourists that don't know any better. Go there, check it out, but please don't buy shit that you don't need. You're just encouraging this bullshit then. And now, it's time for us to talk about the shitty part of Greece. So as you know, or at least you should know, Greece is kind of in an economic pickle. In 2008, the world's economy took a swan dive and Greece got hit the hardest, and still hasn't gotten out of the shit show that is macroeconomics. In its peak, Greece's unemployment rate in 2013 was 28%, today it's a bit lower at 16%, and it's still going down. And today, 34% of Greeks live in poverty or in danger of poverty. When it comes to Athens, while it does also struggle in an economic sense, it also has a different problem, over tourism. 5 million tourists visit Athens every year and people exploit the fuck out of them. First way they fuck over tourists is with entrance fees everywhere. Wanna see a demolished ancient pillar? Okay, 5 euros please. And that's literally for every single ancient site. The price ranges between 5 to 10 euros and I guess it does help out the Greek economy taxing all them tourists but it still kinda sucks. Another shitty thing would be the scammers. Now this is not so much a Greek exclusive problem but a European tourist sub city problem. Where you have these guys who come from London or Nigeria or Africa or the Caribbean and they go up to tourists and try and get them to buy these shitty bracelets for an exorbitant amount of money. They'll come up to you and just keep on bugging even if you say that you're not interested. They'll follow you and just be a nuisance. And the worst thing about it is, they position themselves all around one block and just one after another they come at you and are a pain in the ass. You see them, tell them to fuck off or just ignore them. And yeah, that's about it when it comes to the shitty part of Athens. I guess you also have migrant parts of the city where you're advised not to go, but that's all over Europe now. Other than that, you also have some great beaches where you can chill out and just enjoy life for a little while. And also tortoises. Go to any ancient site where you have a bunch of green space and you'll find tortoises roaming around having a good time. Fuck me, I went to the Kerimikos Cemetery which is an ancient burial ground and I spent more time looking at the tortoises than actually taking in this scenery. 10 out of 10 would do again. Also it's worthwhile mentioning the food. We all know the famous Greek dishes such as gyros, feta cheese and moussaka, but do you guys know of tarama? Forget all I mentioned before, this here is the shit. It's essentially a dip made out of fish eggs. Yeah, you heard me right fish tags and it's amazing. You can get a kilo of this shit for 4 euros and you bet your ass I for sure as hell did. Just place it on a piece of toast and you're good to go my dudes. It's also worthwhile mentioning that Greeks eat a shit ton of halvas which is I don't even know what it is. It's like sesame seed and uh, whatever other seed they can make and they make it into these uh, sweets filled with sugar. It's extremely caloric but Greeks like it for some reason. And yeah that's Athens for ya. 
Of course, there's a shit ton of stuff that I didn't get to talk about in this video, but if I did, this video would be over an hour or so. And my view retention rate isn't that great. Anyways, tell me, have you been to Athens? Do you plan on going? Let me know in the comment section below. My name is Nick, and you've watched Living Around Clean Europe. Jedno grba Kamila, odmah se pomaga.